Blessings everyone, this is Reverend Afrin with the Four Pillars Proto Temple. I'm coming to you today because I want to talk a little bit about creating a spiritual practice. The purpose of creating a spiritual practice is given to give you the opportunity to cultivate your relationship to the divine every day. It gives you the opportunity to become closer with the divine, to remember the divine, and to fulfill your spiritual needs on a daily basis. So the purpose of the spiritual practice is that it's a practice that you continually perpetuate over and over and over again. It's a practice that you need to continually do. That's why it's called a practice. So I want to kind of outline a couple different things that you can do as part of your spiritual practice. Um, this can apply to anybody um, in the spiritual community. So one of the first things that I like to do is read spiritual texts, um, whether that be scriptures or texts um, that are spiritually engaging for me. And the reason why I do this is because in a lot of ways it's almost like uh, remembering the divine, remembering our relationship to the divine and being sort of reminded of those nuances of our faith that we sometimes forget um, to kind of bring all of those beliefs to the forefront of our lives. Um, it reminds me a lot of the Sufi practice of zikr. Now zikr is basically means remembrance and so essentially um, in the Islamic mystic uh, tradition it's used more in terms of chanting similar to Buddhist chanting and it's a way of, of kind of reminding ourselves of our relationship with our higher power in this case you know God um, so for me it's sort of, sort of a way of, of remembrance to kind of remember what my beliefs are what my opinions are on the matter and to kind of keep me engaged in my spiritual practice um, these books don't necessarily have to be religious books they don't necessarily have to be scriptures at all just something that's sort of uh, engaging for you uh, and kind of puts you into a spiritual frame of mind so that's one of the great things that you can do one of the other things to do is to um, do some sort of physical activity that um, is sort of spiritual for you. Um, is it spiritual for you to walk around the park, to walk around the big city, to go for a run, to go for a hike? You know, what sort of physical activity do you do that can actually be a spiritual experience for you? For me, it's going hiking. So I really enjoy and love going hiking um, as much time as I can. I spend outside. Um, this way I have the opportunity to really get in touch with nature and the divine and gives me the opportunity to really see what the divine has created and how the world and nature has developed and how it's grown and it gives me the opportunity to really get out there and kind of see how things really are so I really enjoy going on hikes as a spiritual experience Another thing you can do um, is every single day make time for prayer or meditation. So make a specific time every single day. Sit down uh, and, and, and decide to meditate um, or do prayer. Now this meditation could be as something as simple as um, mindfulness meditation where you're simply just being present. Or you can do other forms of meditation like Tonglen or Metta. Something that e evokes a sort of a spiritual experience for you. Another thing, too, is, of course, prayer. So me while meditation is passive, where you're opening yourself up to being present and to being open to hear the messages of the divine or our higher selves, prayer is active, where we have the opportunity to speak with our higher selves or speak with the divine. So it gives us the great opportunity to be able to have that conversation back and forth and be able to really get something out of our relationship with the divine. Creating a sacred space is another great way. So by having a sacred space, you have that place you can go to. The sacred space for you can be an expression of your spiritual your spirituality and your spiritual relationship with your higher power. So having that positive spiritual place that you can go to, whether it be in your home or whether it's a place outside, in nature, in a park, or even a sacred place um, of another faith that you may be um, drawn to for one reason or another. You know, have the opportunity to go there and really experience and sort of um, immerse yourself in that spiritual feeling. I think it's really, really important. 
One other thing that I really like to do is creating intentions. So for me, intentions are almost like a vow. Um, a vow is, is is not really like a promise. Like when you make a promise, sometimes people make a promise. You know, I promise I'll do that, and then they forget or um, they break their promise. So so promises are not always kept, um, and sometimes they're broken. Uh, sometimes they're meant to be broken. But a vow is never meant to be broken. A vow is something that is a very deeply personal experience. And when you vow to do something, it almost becomes part of your being. And you can't just break a vow as easily as you could um, a, a promise. Uh, certainly, you, it might be it might seem easy to, but because of the spiritual ramifications of breaking a vow, or um, you know, the, even the political ramifications of breaking a vow, like if you are you know, you vow to do something and you're a member of a religious organization and you and you, you break that vow, that could have political um, ramifications for you as well as your standing in that in that organization. So a vow is a very deeply personal experience, one that um, is not easily undone. So making a vow um, or an, setting an intention um, to do something, you know, you set those those intentions and you sort of speak it to the universe. And as you speak it, those vows, those intentions are things that are going to go forward and they're actually going to kind of bring those things to fruition. So that vow could be something as simple as, uh, or intention rather, it could be something as simple as making the intention to sit in meditation on a daily basis or making the intention of um preparing yourself for the job that you want or the career that you want or you know setting that intention and setting those small goals to reach those goals is is really powerful and keeping that as part of a spiritual practice is deeply deeply powerful and gives us the you know the really great opportunity to be able to bring that spirituality to our daily lives now i mentioned a moment ago about um the, the chanting that is done in the mystic traditions. And chanting is also a really great thing that you can do on a daily basis as part of your spiritual practice. Um, chanting or singing, singing hymns, um, singing prayers, um, or chanting mantras or um, intentions or positive affirmations is really a great opportunity to cultivate, again, spiritual um, feelings in one's life. But again, we have to set those intentions and we have to be able to do that. So creating a spiritual practice is really very, very personal. Um, for me, I don't always get the opportunity to do those things every day. <coughs> Excuse me, for a while I was doing um, meditation every morning and I've kind of gotten away from that. Um, but I didn't really see a lot of effects from doing that meditation either. Um, so that was, but I, but I did do it for several weeks on end every single day. Um, so that's really not something that I do much anymore. Um, I do, however, um, perform the devotional ritual every single um, first of the month. So that's something that I do as part on, on part of the the um, temple, um, and it's something that I do on in part of all members of the temple. So that's something that I take very seriously, and I do every single month, um, once a month, um, which is not really very often if you think about it. Um, so I'm trying to find other ways to really cultivate that spiritual practice for me and myself. So I'm in the same boat as most of us, where we have a really difficult time keeping a routine. Um, I've decided as of last week that every Wednesday I will be doing a personal devotional ritual for uh, to Odin. I'm trying personally. I'm trying to build a, a uh, relationship with Odin. Um, I find that a lot of things that he stands for and that he um, cares about are things that I also care about. So I'm trying to build a positive relationship with him and in doing so I've chosen his day Wednesday as the day to perform a devotional ritual to him. So every Wednesday I'm doing that plus once a month I do the devotional ritual on behalf of the temple um, for the temple. So um, there are many many Op options, but there's still many opportunities for me too. Um, so just to give you a couple ideas of things you can do to really begin a spiritual practice, um, if you have any that you think that you do that you would like to share with other people, go ahead and comment on this video. It's a really great opportunity to share with other people and let them know about your spiritual practices and your um, ways of cultivating spirituality in your life. 
So I want to thank everyone so much for watching the video. Um, thank you so much. I do apologize. I haven't been very active in the in the page lately. It's been very cold here on and off. Um, so I've been hibernating a little bit, but um, I'm ready to come back and continue working on the channel, uh, continue working on the page as well as the group um, for the temple. So thank you so much for watching everyone. Until next time, signing off for now.